What is up YouTube? This is your boy Be Nice coming to you again with another video. This video will be on my top five albums of 2018. This year we've seen something that I don't think we've seen in a lot of years and that would be a lot of music in such a short amount of time. Every week there have been just about two to three different albums dropping and it kind of makes it hard to do a video like this because there's so much music to listen to. Um, and honestly, because of the oversaturation of music, there hasn't been uh, too many clear-cut favorites for me throughout the year. But there are a few that have stood out to me, and that is how I came up with this top five list. So coming in at number five, a lot of people are probably going to be mad at me about this, but I am going to put J. Cole's KOD album at number five. Um, J. Cole is one of those interesting and mysterious rappers who who can pretty much do just about everything that you ask of him. He's a uh, pop, he can do rap, he's his own producer, and he also makes like feel good music, I guess, and for lack of better words. Um, but the thing about him that I love the most is that um, he has a message for the youth. He has messages for the other rappers in the industry, and uh, he does it in such a creative way that makes him a person that you can actually listen to and not feel like they're preaching to you, in a sense. Standouts on this album for me, KOD, ATM, Motivate, Kevin's Heart and 1985, which is technically a diss to Little Pump. But for the most part, J. Cole's album was a solid album of this year, and that's why I put it at number five. At number four, I am putting Travis Scott's Astro World there. Now, <laughs> I'm a little bit upset myself that Travis is the number four album on my list because that was probably one of the most highly anticipated albums that I've been looking forward to all year. Um, actually, I've been looking forward to it since he dropped his last album, uh, Birds in the Trap. I was like, I don't know how he's gonna top this album because Birds in the Trap was probably one of my favorite albums of the entire year when he released it. Astro World has features from a lot of big name artists in the industry. Um, he has features from Drake, he has features from Frank Ocean, uh, 21 Savage, Gunna, and some other artists in there as well sprinkled in. Uh, the only hard part about that is that Apple Music doesn't really tell you who the features are on his album, so you just have to listen to it to kind of figure out yourself. Some of the standouts on that album for me are Carousel, Sicko Mode, Stop Trying to Be God, and NC17, which is the song that features 21 Savage. Coming in at number three, I have YG's Stay Dangerous. So, <laughs> I put YG's Stay Dangerous above Astroworld for numerous reasons. Uh, honestly, I think YG has a better project because of the way that it flows. Uh, nothing sounds the same, and honestly, it's the, the YG that I've been I've been pretty much looking forward to since he dropped Steel Brazy. YG is probably one of the better artists that made that transition from the hood into Hollywood, but he kept his roots to him. Honestly, I think Stay Dangerous is a, a way better album than Steel Brazy uh, because I felt like YG went back to his roots. Uh, from his mixtape days, uh, Just Read Up 2. That was honestly one of my favorite projects that w YG had released. It was filled with hit after hit after hit, in my opinion. And um, I felt like when YG made that transition to albums, he kind of lost touch with that side of his music because um, he was doing a lot more commercial tracks for the most part. Um, my crazy, my crazy life was a was a, a a great album for a debut, and then he followed up with Still Brazy, uh, which I thought wasn't that great of an album, but he returned true to form with Stay Dangerous. Some of the standouts for me on Stay Dangerous is uh, Big Bank, Too Cocky, Bulletproof, and Can't Get in Canada. Coming in at number two is Tory Lanez and his album Memories Don't Die. 
And the reason why I put this at number two is because Tory Lanez is one of the most underrated artists in the game. Um, I feel like this album was a great sophomore project following up from his, uh, from his debut album. It wasn't too long, it had just enough tracks, and Tory was able to show how versatile he is in the rap game, slash uh, reggae game, slash like dance hall, like this man could do it all. In this project, you see Tory uh, squash his beef with Drake and a few other artists. You were able to see uh, how he can approach serious topics and make them hits. He has some well thought out features. He has a lot of different tracks on the album that makes it something that's very listen toable for any different occasion. If you want to feel like you're a gangster, you can listen to it. If you want to feel like uh, like you want to go dance or something like that, he definitely has club hits on this album. Some standouts on the album include Shooters, For Me, Skirt Skirt, B.I.D., 48 Floors, and Connection. My number one album of the year is going to be the one and only Drake. <laughs> Drake released Scorpion as a two-part album, and let me tell you, this album probably is one of Drake's best works. Uh, according to my buddy uh, Emmanuel, uh, Scorpion is top three in Drake's a long list of projects that he has released and honestly I, I just might agree with him on that one the first part of the album is like more rap centric uh, as far as like Drake trying to be like hardcore Drake let me come at you sideways and then I dare someone to try me type of Drake and then uh, the second part of the album is the more sensitive part of Drake where he has more tunes for the ladies uh, and the infamous uh, Kiki do you love me are you riding uh, track in my feelings I've listened to it numerous times I've grown to appreciate the, the entire project completely this album pretty much just shows how much of a hybrid Drake really is and how much uh, Drake has influence on the industry. Um, I spoke earlier about how Tory Lanez uh, was also a hybrid when it comes to the pop rap and doing reggae music and everything like that. But honestly, I feel like uh, Drake is the master of it all. Tory Lanez is probably the closest thing to Drake that we will get as far as an artist and what do you know they're both from Toronto but uh, Drake Scorpion album is my number one album of the year and some of the standouts from that album are Nonstop, Mob Ties, In My Feelings, After Dark, Don't Matter To Me, Jaded, and That's How You Feel. So those are my top five albums of the year. If you felt like there's an album that I may have overlooked that should have been on this list let me know, uh, put it in the comments below, and then I'll read them, and then maybe I'll do a revision to the video, and then we'll go from there. Um, so thank you for uh, watching my video. If you like the content, please like and subscribe and click the little bell notification, whatever. I might try to fit it in somewhere in this area or maybe over here. I don't know. Uh, I will post it. Uh, I will put it in the video somewhere for sure. Um, but yeah, thank you again. Thanks for watching my video.